YouTube. So yeah, it's Friday morning as of making this video. We've got a BMW, I think it's like 118 ID, whatever. I don't care. It's just, <laughs> just like four panels that need to go blue again. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what car it's on. It's a BMW, one series. I don't mind these little cars. Personally, I'd, I'd go on Mercedes over a uh, Beamer, but pretty cool little cars. Cool thing that there last night. Bit of a scuff. Hopefully it's just sitting on top of the panel. Bit of 800 there. No, yeah, that's a little chip. So uh, I'll just pop a little bit of colour over it. It's, you know what? It's not even got a neat colour. I'll just clear straight over that one. Oh, good. Yeah, it's sort of over that area that you wouldn't really want to fix it anyway. Yeah. Oh, good. It's all in the tack rags for getting clean jobs there, Gannon. Tack on, brothers, tack on. Yeah, so this one here on the fender, just there, uh, that was a little freebie I decided to do. I checked my caliper. The colour was pretty good, like if I do go up to the top edge of the, the fender to the bonnet, I'm not going to be losing any sleep because the colour's good enough anyway. The Vilba DD1 HVLT Plus 1.2. So we get colour in that edge.
there's one more cone after this. I mean, it looks easily covered. So, yeah, my rule of thumb has always been get it so it looks covered, put an extra coat on it, and then clear it. I mean, some people come in with their, their colour matching lights and all that, but personally, I just find it unnecessary. I mean, yeah, if you, if you feel you need to do it, I'm not telling you not to, but I, I don't need to. I don't feel the need to strap an LED light to the back of my gun or anything silly like that. digital gauge if you have a digital DV-1. So yeah, today I've got standoff standard clear in the gun. Um, I went for 2025, which is medium magma. So it's not fast, it's not slow, it's medium. So the numbers on standoff partners correlate to temperatures. So you know, depending on the temperature of the day, well, yeah, between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius, that's the timing you should use. I mean, I'm a bit of a bad boy, so I don't always use exactly the right one. Sometimes I'll use a fast, on, like I'll use, say, 10, 20 on a 30 degree day sometimes. But you know what? Sometimes you just need that paint to dry faster. But, um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give that a few minutes between coats. Let it flash right off. Let that second coat sit right up on top of it. If I was to go straight away now, they'd sort of melt into one. And uh, this clear, it doesn't have as much body as some of your full HS or VOC clears. Um, yeah, what, can, what else can I talk about? Um, I don't know, should I flick the cam off? Yeah, I'll flick the cam off for a minute. I'll see you when I'm putting that second coat on. Radio Gunners, so I actually thought of something to have a quick chat about while I'm waiting. And once I've finished talking about it, we'll put our next coat on. So I actually have already waited for a minute and we probably could go already, but I want to have a chat about something next. Um, and something that I used to talk about a lot, I haven't made much of a mention to it in the last couple of years, but um, air pressures and temperatures um, definitely do, they are correlated. So in the winter, you'll find that you need to set the pressure on your gun a little bit higher than what you do in the summer. So currently it's, you know, the, well it's actually the tail end of summer, it's not the middle of summer, but either way, it's, it's the time of year when we're getting some really hot days. Like yesterday, I was spraying this Mazda 6 and it was 36 degrees, which Fahrenheit would probably be approaching 100 degrees, probably like 95 degrees or something like that. Um, so quite warm and I had to drop the pressure down to probably around 25, 23 PSI rather than 29 PSI which is what I usually spray my clear coat at. Um, yeah, just because of the heat man, like, and I think there's a scientific reason for that because um, the colder the air, it's more dense. So you're actually getting, if you're talking about volumes, not pressures, you're probably actually getting the same amount of air coming out at a lower pressure in winter, or sorry, in summer. So yeah, I hope that made sense and there might even be someone who's, uh, I don't know, <laughs> some kind of a, a atmospheric scientist that's watching that can explain it in the comments a little bit better than me, but I think I did my best to, to explain that one anyway. Yeah, it's just, I think it's just like if you study gases and, you know, I watch a lot of science stuff on YouTube and, you know, space-related stuff and um, about atmospheres and basically, yeah, the mole air molecules, um, when they're colder or more dense, when they're hotter, they're, they're more spread apart. So you're, um, you're actually getting a higher pressure um, with the same volume in winter, if that makes sense. <laughs> so at a lower pressure, you're getting the same volume in, in a higher temperature. Okay, before we get too confused, I'm gonna set this at 1.5 bar. Yeah, I can see myself coming around to this to clear. It, it does smack it on. So this is a 1.2 HDLP plus. So HDLP plus is the air cap. 1.2 is the fluid tip. And their settings are 1.5 bar here, which is a cut under two bar at the base of the gun. You know, your PSI, you probably 24, 25, something like that. Again, it's a warmer day today. And this is all you need, like, to, to go and put more pressure through your gun, you're just, just going to be spraying it through the filters of the spray boost rather, rather than, yeah, you're just going to be getting way too much over spray. You're going to lower your transfer efficiency for little gain. Um, yeah, still running at full fluid, full fan. Just smashing it on, baby! Yeah, that's looking all good. Looking like a BMW finish.
takes up 420 mil for this job here. So yeah, I've been pretty much running on 130 mil per panel. Even with the ZV1, so it's not like the ZV1 goes through any more clear than my Pro Light or anything. But yeah, I do do really like the control you get out of the, the Pro Light. It's not the fastest one on the on the market. This one probably is a little bit faster, even with the 1.2 on it. But I have a look at the one point on the Pro Light and the 1.2 on the ZV1 is bigger for whatever weird ass reason anyway we've got a few nibs here and there nothing major actually I've got a couple of little silicon spots I'm going to have to dab them in before I hit bake so I'll do that before I hit bake and I'll sand them out when we're out the back ready for polishing anyway I'll give you a look at it Thank you.